Hello and welcome to another video of programming fundamentals. This is week number 13 and in the theory class we talked about functions, how they are created, how they work, what are the different types of functions, what are the advantages of using function and so on. In this practical session we will see some programs that will demonstrate the concept of functions in much details. Let us start with our first program. As you can see in this program, the first four lines are comments and these uh, comments actually demonstrate or give us information about the program. For example, in the line number two, we can see that we are in the week number 13 of this course and this week is about functions. Inside week number 13, this is our first program. What is the purpose of this program? To understand the concept of how we can actually define a function and how we can call a function. So let us see them. In line number 5, what we see is actually definition of the function, while in line number 7 is actually calling the function. And both these two components are important for defining a user-defined function. We need a function definition and we need to call the function. The line number 6 is actually the, the block, statement block. It could be a single statement or it could be multiple statement because function is actually uh, the collection of different statements grouped together to perform a task. Okay. So we can see here in this case, the function body has only a single statement. Function definition. The first line of the function definition is the function header. It is actually make of four components. First, we have to write the keyword def which is followed by name of the function it could be any descriptive name in this case the name of my function is my underscore function which must be followed by parenthesis and must be end with this colon this is actually the body of the function this will be executed once we call this function remember function definition doesn't mean execution of the code it mean only declaration the code will be executed once you call the function. Here at line number 7, we are calling the function. To call the function, the procedure is very simple. Just write name of the function followed by parenthesis and that's it. Python interpreter will call the function. It will jump to the location where the function has been defined and will execute the code. In this case, it will print the statement hello from my function on the screen. After execution, the interpreter will jump back to the location from where uh, it was called from where we called it will come back to this station as we do not have any other statement then the program will terminate here let us see the output of this program Oops. see it display the function the, the statement defined inside the function that is hello from i underscore Okay, in the theory class, I mentioned several advantages of using function. One of the advantage is reusability. You do not need to define the code again and again once you need that code. For example, if you want this statement to be executed several times, then you need to call the function several times. In this program, I am calling the function three times. I am calling the function three times. So it will display the statement hello. Uh, from my function three times. See, the same line of code is executed three times because I called the function three times. So once uh, you define a function, you can call it as many times as you want from any location that you want. Let us move to our second uh, example. In this example, we will learn how we can actually define a function and how we can call a function. This is like the previous program. However, uh, here in this program, uh, we are going to import a library and the library is related with the time and date. Uh, we will not go into the detail of this library, but uh, in very short uh, context, this Library contain all the information related with your current time and date. different formats, how you can actually display the time, how you can actually display 
um, the current date in which format would you like to display them which 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 portion of the date uh, you want to display and which portion of the time you want to okay. so all these things are defined inside this library then I am defining a function with the name date underscore function inside this function I have a statement which is like this print first it will display the string today is and then uh, I am using a built-in method which is defined inside this library date time dot date time dot now this is the syntax that you must have to follow what will happen here first it will display the current uh, date of the system let's suppose today is 22nd january 2020 it will display the date and now is for what is the current time let's suppose the current time is 3 31 pm and 10 seconds and 45 0 millisecond things like that so it will display the current date and time with the help of this a built-in function and with this parameter but this will happen only once you call the function date underscore time in the next statement I am printing a simple statement before calling date function in line number 10 I am making a call to the function a function date underscore function you have a call please execute the statement inside your body and return back to the location from where you were called after execution of the function the last statement at line number one will be executed that is after calling date function so let us see how this program uh, will work first the first four lines will be ignored because they are comments line number five okay the library has been important the function is defined but not executed this statement will be executed first before calling date function after execution of this statement we have a call to the function date underscore function once the control is transferred here this statement inside the body of the function will be executed it means the current date and time the current date and time of this of the system will be displayed on the screen after that control will be transferred to the next statement after the function call and then after calling date functions uh, statement uh, will be displayed on the screen so once you run this program you will see before calling date function is displayed then call is made to the function and the current date which is here and the current time which is this one is displayed and then after control has been returned to the location from where the call was made the last statement is after calling date function it was displayed on the screen this this program also demonstrate the use of functions how we can actually define a function and how we can actually call a function it was demonstrated if you want to try another statement another method related with the date and time library there is to use today instead of using now this will display only the, the current date not the current time let us see the output see now the only the date information is displayed not the time info so if you required the time as well as the date information go for this now and if you are interested only in displaying um, the date information then go for today let's move to the next program our next program is quite simple and this is about single argument remember in the theory I told you that sometimes these parentheses are empty but other times you can write different parameters inside these parentheses okay for Python programmers or for any other programmer the concept of parameter and argument is a bit complicated for beginners uh, we recommend to, to make no distinguish between these two concepts parameters and arguments are actually the same thing but for professional programmer they are different whatever variable name that you are using inside the function definition are your function parameters and whatever values you are using inside the calling function they are actually the argument mean the values that you provide to the function are actually the arguments and the variable that you write inside the function definition 
which will actually handle those values handle those arguments is actually your parameter parameter is something related with the definition and arguments are something related with the function calling or the values that you provide to the function okay so in this case we have a single parameter here and there is f name this is the function body it will be executed every time the function is called in this program i am calling this function three times and every time i need to call this function i have to provide a value okay because it will expect something from me if you do not provide the value it will give you an error so you have to provide a value what is going to be the data type of the value so remember python is a dynamic programming language you can provide string value you can provide float value you can provide boolean value you can provide string value integer boolean float anything that you want it will convert the type automatically for you but in other languages there are restrictions the data type of the parameter and the data type of the argument must be same that is not the case with python let us see the output of this program it will call the function three times for the first time it will provide the value ali for the second time it will provide the value bilal and for the term time it will provide an argument kamal to the parameter f name okay suppose uh, let us call the function without providing an argument as i just mentioned it will give you an error okay. line number nine error missing one required argument f name required a value to be provided and we are missing that value so it will give you an error this is how we can actually pass an argument to a function now you may ask question how we can pass multiple values or how we can declare multiple parameters in a function that is possible if you want to use multiple parameters remember that you have to separate them with so in this case this function is going to accept two arguments first name and last name now if you want to call this function you have to provide two arguments the data type remember dynamic type it could be anything you run this program you will see that it will display the first name and last name this muhammad name will be assigned to the first parameter and the ali name will be assigned to the second parameter and then here we are actually printing those the values of these parameters which is muhammad and ali it will display them on the screen another way to display the values of this parameter of these parameters is to use uh is to use the concatenation operator remember this plus sign this is actually concatenation operator concatenation operator we remove concatenation operator mean combine these two strings first name and last name output is going to be the same it concatenate the two string combine the two string now i want a space between these two names first name and last name i need some space for that you can actually use the escape sequence backslash t which will give a tab between the first name and the last name like this is how we can actually pass multiple arguments to a function let us move to the next program it is about default parameters in the previous program uh, we declared two parameters sometime we want to call a function which actually requires an argument without providing an argument in that case we have to use the default parameter let us see this program at line number five the function my definition expect a value from the user every time you call this function you have to provide an argument name of any but here with the help of equal sign i am assigning a variable this uh, assigning a value this value is known as default parameter value what will happen if you call this function without providing any argument just as in the case 
of line number 10. I am calling a function which expect an argument but I am calling it without providing an argument. What will happen? In this case, it will provide, it will assign the default value Norway to this function parameter. That is possible. In this program, I am calling the function my underscore function four times. For the first time, at line number seven, I am providing the argument Sweden. At line number eight, I am providing the argument India. At line number nine, I am providing the argument another argument and then at line number 10 I am providing no argument what will happen at line number 10 the default parameter value that is Norway will be considered if you run this program it will not give you an error because it will consider the default uh, value for this parameter country however if you remove this default value and then you try to call this function without providing any argument then it will give you an error okay so you have to uh, you have to provide a value an argument to this function to call it or the second solution is to uh, to to provide a default value to this parameter okay guys let's move step forward our program number six in this program we are actually using two functions remember i told you in the theory that it is possible to define a function or to call a function from another function and i introduced the concept of main which is different from date of the concept that we use in c and c plus plus language you can actually give it any name as you can give any name to this function my function so the main could be anything any valid identifier name is possible what will happen here first the four line or comments they will be ignored fifth number line is actually definition the function is created memory is reserved okay but it will not execute it will not be executed once we call this function then it will be executed line and number seven we define another function at line number seven a name of the function is main remember it is only definition it will be executed once it is called so these three lines indented the block of the main or the body of the main function they will be executed only once we have a call for this function line number 11 now we have a call for which function for the main function now this will be executed first it will display start of main function on the screen then here we have a call for a second function which means stop execution here do not go do not proceed proceed to the next line make a jump to the my function so the interpreter will jump from the main function to the my function and it will execute the body of the main of the my function here it will display hello from my function that is the second statement to be printed on the screen after completing the execution of the my function control will be transferred to the location from where it was make we make a call from here and then we return here the next statement will be executed and that is print end of main function so once you run this program the first statement to be executed is start of main function the second statement to be executed is hello from my function and the third statement to be executed is end of main function let us see the output of this program see start hello and function this is how we can actually call a function within from within another okay too many programs this is going to be the last program for this week and it is simple we can provide arguments to the function beside we can also i skip one program but this is also about returning value so we can provide arguments to the function but we can also return something from the function in order to return a value from a function we have to use the keyword return okay let us execute this program line by line first four line are comments ignored line number five function definition this is function header okay memory reserved this is what we expect from this function first whenever you want to call this function you have to provide an argument and that argument that you provide will be saved in the variable or in the parameter x and then the function will multiply the value provided by the user as an argument 
with 5 and the result of this multiplication will be returned to the user okay so you see we actually call a function we provide an argument and then and then the result is also returned from the function where so it is possible to return a value from a function if you remember we studied two type of functions function they do not return values and function they return values so in this case it this function returns the value line number seven i am calling this function for the first time what i need to do i need to provide an argument so in this case i am providing three three will be assigned to this variable x the value of x is three what will happen here five will be multiplied with the value of x that is three and the result is 15 this result will be returned to the user to the location from where the function was called and then here is the print function hey print the value that you return that you get from this function and that value is 15 this will actually the print function will display this value on the screen line number eight again we have a call for the function in order to call the function we need to provide a value and the value that we are providing to this function as an argument is 5 the x will contain 5 multiply 5 by x which is 5 5 multiplied by 5 25 okay after processing after calculation of this value return it to the location from where it was called and then with the help of print function we are actually printing the value Finally, we are calling this function from the third time. This time, we are providing the value as an argument 9. 9 will be assigned to x. Here, we are multiplying 5 by x, which is 9. And the output is 45. This 45 will be returned to the location from where it was called. And then we are printing this value with the help of print function. So, 45 will be displayed on the screen. If you run this program, the output is going to be 15, 25, and 45. This is how we can actually return a value from a function with the help of return key word. Last program is also about returning a value from the function. Here the concept is almost the same. We have a function. The name of the function is square. It could be anything. The parameter is x. Means if you want to call this function, you have to provide an argument. Okay body of the function block statement of the function is return okay return the value x multiply by x what is in x anything that you provide as an argument will be stored in x and that will be multiplied with the x lastly we are actually calling this function you can see we have a call for the square function and the argument that we are providing is 2 2 will be assigned to this x the value of x is 2 from where did we get this value from this function call you can see here we are calling the function and we are providing a value as an argument that is 2 2 will be assigned to the parameter x next once you call a function the statement the body of the, of the function will be executed 2 multiply by 2 answer is 4 this will be returned with the help of return keyword and then we have the print statement print what will be printed on the screen first this is a string constant string literal the square is colon this will be displayed on the screen and then the value returned from this function which is 4 will be displayed on the screen the output of this program will be the square is multiply by 2 4 let us run this program and see the output the square is 4 now if uh, you are asked to find uh, let's suppose 3 times multiplication what you need to do multiply it once like 2 multiply by 2 and then multiply by 2 the output is 8 okay like cube to find a cube of a number that is possible so this is how we can actually define a function we can call a function how we provide arguments to the function and how we return values from the function Thank you so much for watching the lecture. In the next week, we will continue to explore the functions in more details. Thank you so much for watching the lecture. Goodbye.